what's going on my name is Harrison and this is gonna be an Unreal Engine 4 C++ tutorial on how to add force to a static mesh so let's go ahead and run run the final product right now so you can see I'm running around and when I push fire I do a red line trace but then the objects are moving just by the on force method uh, provided by the engine so again you never have to watch these videos there should be a github link down in the down in the description below but if not if you want to continue watching let's go ahead and delete this code from the character cpp file and recreate it in c++ okay so now let's go ahead and jump over into our ide i'm using visual studio all of our code is going is going to go into our character cpp file i'm using the standard unreal engine 4 c++ template uh, the first person template so right now in our character cpp file let's go ahead and add our draw debug helpers header file they'll help us out and uh, draw the line just to kind of help us out and see what we hit let's include draw debug helpers now everything we do is going to happen inside the on fire component or the on fire method Right here, we don't need any of the projectile code, so let's go ahead and delete that. Now let's go ahead and make it happen. The first thing we want to do is get a hit result. So let's create our variable f hit result. Call it hit. Next, let's get our forward vector of our camera. It's going to be an f vector variable. Camera forward, I think is what I'm calling it. F vector first person camera component and from there get the forward vector next I'm just gonna set an arbitrary uh, line length because I'll you know you can change it later but let's do a line length and call it and uh, make it 2,000 unreal units that is 2,000 we'll use it to extend the line trace Next, get the control rotation of our spawn. Uh, F rotator. Spawn rotator, or is spawn, what am I calling it? Uh, spawn rotation. Get control rotation. This is from the standard shooting template that, like from the code that we just deleted that shot out the projectile, I'm pretty much just using some of that to kind of mimic how our force is going to happen. Next, create an F vector for our start location. In the original code, this was called the spawn location of where the yellow ball would spawn. So basically, it's just a few Unreal units offset of the gun so you don't collide with the gun. Uh, start location. It's going to be FP uh, muzzle location. That's not null. Then go ahead and do the ternary operation. FP muzzle location. We're going to get the component. Get component location. Um, if it's false, then let's do the following: get actor location. Uh, get actor location, and then from there, we're gonna add on the spawn rotation. Dot rotate vector start rotate vector and then inside that let's do the gun offset so the start location if the gun's muzzle location if, if, if the first person muzzle location is not null then we're going to get the component location uh, if it comes back false, we'll get the actor location, but regardless, we'll add on the gun offset to that spawn rotation, spawn rotator right here. Um, gun offset, you can see that it was defined up above, right here in the constructor file. So 
that's the offset that we're doing so off 100 unreal units and up 10 so from there let's go ahead and continue we're gonna want to set a endpoint for our line trace or yeah we'll call that end location and that equals start location plus camera forward Let's make sure we're always moving forward uh, times a thousand or no not times a thousand but times line length rather I spelled length wrong up here and put the G back uh, and that should be good Moving on, we'll do an F collision query params variable. Call it collision params. Collision parameters. Now let's do our line trace. Get world line trace uh, line trace single by channel. Log it to hit. Start location, end location. Uh, e collision channel. We'll set it to ECC physics body. And then we'll set our collision parameters. Parameters. X. So after we do that, let's draw our line just so we can see where our traces is going. Draw a debug line. Uh, get world, start location, end location. Same as the line trace. We'll color it red. True, so it doesn't, uh, so it doesn't erase itself after it's drawn and we'll give it a width of one okay so now let's get down to the logic so if we're successful if the hit is successful like if we actually hit something um, I'll see something with it so if that's true then if get hit that uh, hit dot get actor uh, we're gonna use this bool is root component movable is root component mo uh, movable then we will do the following logic so is root movable what I'm referring to is let's go back into the editor uh, this thing right here this cube we needed to set it as movable under its mobility setting under the details panel that if that is not movable, then it will not be able to uh, have force added to it and just move around the world. So, you know, if it was static, it would probably just sit there or sit there and nothing will happen to it. So we only want to give, uh, we only want to affect the ones that, you know, kind of have physics applied and can move throughout the world and affect the world. Uh, back in here. So is root component movable? It, it, it's an error check for sure because if you don't do that then you'll get an error or a warning saying that it can't move a certain mesh because it's not movable uh, now let's do the fun part of actually moving these things use static mesh component variable just call it a pointer mesh root comp and that's going to and we're going to cast it to our hit actor. Use static mesh component. Am I doing this right? Uh, use static mesh component. Um, hit dot get actor get root component. It won't work on just a regular mesh. You need to get the root component of it, so it can't just be the mesh itself or the or the actor itself. Rather, it has to be the root component. 
uh, mesh root comp and we'll add the force to it the function that we want add force and to make sure that's always going forward of where we're looking uh, camera forward let's get that forward vector uh, you can change these numbers to whatever you want but I'm gonna do I think I have it says like 10,000 maybe a hundred thousand to give me a good pump or push out of it uh, and we're gonna multiply that by mesh root comp uh, mass so let's go ahead compile it run it see if there's any errors and fix them and then run it all right there's an error let me check it out forward vector is not a member of view camera component uh, 147. It's just a typo, probably. F vector, camera forward, F vector, first person camera component. Uh, it's get forward vector, not just forward vector. Let's recompile and see if it works. All right, compile was successful. Let's go ahead and push play. Oh, get rid of that log. Now let's go ahead and push play. And it's not working. Or it's working for that guy. I don't know why these aren't working. What did I do? Let me save it. Does not have physics applied to them? That'll do it. So let's apply those physics. Are those good? Let's see. There we go. I don't know. Oh, I guess after when I changed it to static and then moved it back to movable, maybe it kind of removed the uh, physics for it. But regardless, pretty cool. Now we kind of have the force, you know, on us. So this would be a pulse gun or the force ability like in Star Wars or anything. So, or just, you know, just a gun using a line, tra line trace rather than a physical object to draw the bullet. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next